Thank you. Thank you so much. Please have a seat. Thank you. We're really excited to be back in Northwest Florida. We got another great announcement that's going to be great for the people of the state of Florida. And it's always a great announcement anytime I'm joined by Florida's amazing first lady, my wife. So she's. And she'll have uh, a lot to say about uh, our initiative today. We're also joined by Florida's Chief Financial Officer, Jimmy Petronas. We have our Secretary for the Department of Children and Family, Siobhan Harris, joining us today. And really one of the people that spearheaded a lot of our uh, efforts in, in this area, uh, Dr. Ken Shepke is going to be with us today. <laughs> We're also joined by Representative Shane Abbott. Uh, where is, is this your district right here? This, okay. this is Pat, Pat Maney. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for coming. And then we're also joined by uh, Paula Frederick from Bay County and Jenna uh, Schinholster from Walton County, and you will hear from them a little bit later. We're here today uh, to talk about our efforts to combat the opioid crisis. And this is a, a serious crisis that's affecting not just the state of Florida, but really every corner of these United States. In 2021, more than 107,000 Americans died from a drug overdose, and over 75% of those were related to opioids. More people are dying from drug overdoses than car crashes uh, every year uh, in our country. Unfortunately, uh, the Biden administration has done slim to no work to actually try to prevent opioids from entering our communities in the first place. Uh, we know that things like fentanyl are manufactured in China and they are sent to North America via, uh, into our country via the southern border between the United States and Mexico. They have trafficked enough fentanyl, it's so little fentanyl can kill so many people that if you look at just last month, there's enough fentanyl that came into this country to kill every single American. Over 320 million people could be dead based on the amount of fentanyl. Now, we've worked really hard to do our part in combating uh, the border crisis. Uh, we actually just did a case in the panhandle suing Biden on his catch and release policies. And I think we're going to win the case. We're waiting for the decision. Uh, of course, we've done a whole bunch of other efforts. We're now interdicting in the southern uh, uh, part of our state, coming in by boat. Uh, and we're working hard across all, all segments. But the reality is you have this stuff just flowing in to our country. And it's very, very dangerous. And the thing about it is, is and you'll see a video that, that makes this point that the First Lady and some of the other folks in the administration worked on, you can have a, a teenager using some type of, of drug and not even know that there's fentanyl in it. Uh, and this is a lot different than like what people were doing in like the 1960s. Uh, you have fentanyl laced and all kinds of stuff that uh, can be deadly and oftentimes is deadly. Now, we do things to be able to help people who are overdosed on the spot. We now have, we're going to announce some mobile response teams, and we're doing a lot to do that. And I know through our efforts, working with local law enforcement, we have saved lives uh, and saved people who are in the throes of that. You know, but the bottom line is you, know, you have such little margin for error when you're talking about some of these street drugs and what could be put into them. So we have been working very hard on this in the state of Florida. Last August, we announced the launch of what we're calling our core network, uh, and it's an emergency response and addiction treatment program that is based on a successful pilot from down in Palm Beach County. It's an initiative designed to establish a coordinated system of care for those seeking treatment for opioid use disorder. Uh, we're working with county health care partners as well as emergency medical services uh, to fill gaps in services and make sure that people have access to care 24-7. We were the first in the nation to do uh, this particular approach and it's a coordinated effort involving not just local communities but our, our state agencies. 
And the goal is, is to identify the problem, but then get people where they need to be so they can, they can live productive lives um, and not ultimately succumb uh, to this. So why are we here today? Well, I think most of you know that the states recently secured in some of these lawsuits that have been filed against some of the opioid manufacturers, uh, big settlements. So this is billions and billions of dollars in settlement money because these were companies that knew that these were very highly addictive uh, medications and they put that out there without um, really doing what they needed to do to protect consumers. And so a lot of people got hooked on those as a result and it did a lot of damage to our society and it cost many, many lives. So today we are announcing our plan to use the $205.7 million that Florida is receiving from the opioid settlement agreement to further our efforts to prevent and treat substance abuse in the state of Florida. Uh, now we have a whole host of other things that we're doing. We talked about our my budget last month. We laid out a bunch of stuff and, and all together, we're looking at over a half a billion dollars uh, that we will be doing for things enumerated in the budget. And that's important and we'll continue to do it. What are we gonna do with this $200 million? Well, there's gonna be parceled out and from a number of different areas. One, 26.8 million to expand this core network that we are pioneering. That means, I think we have 12 counties now, you're gonna end up seeing that expanding and it's gonna be something that's gonna be very, very positive. Uh, we have 10.2 million to establish, which we have to do under the settlement terms, Office of Opioid Recovery, uh, but we're gonna use that to try to drive good outcomes and have proper oversight. 39.4 million for prevention, 92.5 million for treatment, 25.3 million for recovery and peer support, and 11.3 million uh, to try to integrate some of the data that we have so that people can evaluate the success or not of some of these programs. And the data will look at things like crime related to opioid adverse events related to overdose, um, as well as the different treatment metrics. Now, the opioid settlement, in addition to what we're doing with the 205.7 million, also gives 135.4 million directly to local communities. And so that will be done, and these local communities will be able to use that as well. So we're, uh, uh, we think that this will make a difference. If you look at some of the things that we've done uh, leading up to this point, we're always trying to figure out how can we do better, how can we get ahead of some of these problems, what, what could we be doing that, that, that others may not be doing, but, but maybe something that we need to. So if you look at that, we'll have the office uh, set up that will help be able to really do real-time oversight over this, uh, but then also with our core network, it'll expand to 17 counties, and this will be something that is gonna help a lot of local communities. We did the uh, pilot program expansion last year, and since that time with the core network, we've serviced and evaluated 2,682 individuals uh, for opioid use disorder. And the network has a retention rate of 70% and averages a relapse rate of 2%. So that's pretty good. And so state leaders, you'll hear from Secretary Harris, uh, Dr. Joe Latipose, our Secretary of Health and Surgeon General, not here today, but he's been intimately involved. And then Dr. Ken Shepke, they've visited all 12 of the original counties in the core network. Uh, they've been able to watch the model in action. And I think we're very pleased at the results uh, that we've been able uh, to do. Uh, we have now, since the core was established, it has a website where Floridians can get connected to addiction care in their community. So this includes all Florida counties. Even if you don't necessarily have your county be part of the core network, you're still somebody that's gonna be um, eligible for this. And so resources are on the webpage at flcorenetwork.com. That's F-L-C-O-R-E-N-E-T-W-O-R-K dot com, floridacorenetwork.com. So it's not limited to those 12 and soon to be 17 counties. Uh, you're gonna be able to get support uh, that you need. Some of the community programs that we're doing in terms of the support, the financial support, uh, we are doing the 
um, the, the spray that they use to be able to, to, to bring people back. Uh, people be suffering from overdose, you know, Narcan and these things, you use it, it works. And so we're gonna be able to distribute uh, an additional 186,000 kits to various communities, local health departments, law enforcement, emergency responders throughout the state of Florida. We're also gonna put $9 million to implement five on-demand mobile treatment units to aid substance abuse treatment and prevention efforts in rural and hard to reach areas. And it's important to do that to support our rural communities. We are going to uh, show here in a minute um, uh, the video, and then I will introduce um, uh, you know, the First Lady. So if we have the video teed up, do we have it teed up? We can go ahead and do it, and then I will introduce her. Okay, is that, is that good? Substance abuse will cause you to lose teeth, turns your hair gray, makes your skin sag, and your nails yellow. Teenagers are actually more vulnerable to take risks. I was sexually abused when I was five years old. It was really just this festering wound that eventually led me to drugs and alcohol. I remember seeing this nurse walk back and forth through the room. So you're in the hospital. She said, you're lucky to be alive. I don't know how you're still here. There's this perception that it's not a big deal. They seem to think that if I start out with marijuana, it's not going to do a whole lot to me. I took a hit of pot, and one thing led to another, and I went to jail. I've never seen anyone have a seizure, and I thought I was watching him die. Corrupted all the time. I went into cardiac arrest three times. You know, just having my grandparents come see me in jail was pretty low. I had two cups of alcohol. I woke up and I was going to go to the dead. I know without a doubt I got in the car and took a whole family out. I've served 44 years in prison. 44 years. She was bigger than life and quite a sense of humor. She was introduced to heroin, and it just so happened it was Lace was pregnant. So I went to the group. You know, she was a baby. I'm tired of fentanyl. You're dead. You are gray. You are dead. So it's, I think, designed to pack a punch and, and really alert people to what the stakes are with some of the stuff that, that's circulating out there. 
And I really want to thank the First Lady for spear spearheading so many initiatives over the last four plus years for families in Florida, but particularly uh, her substance abuse initiative in schools. Uh, you know, she's worked with our Board of Education to ramp up efforts in schools to promote resiliency in our students, uh, which is really important in helping uh, to prevent drug abuse. Uh, she has re really led the charge to protect our kids from substance abuse, which will have impacts on families, individuals, and communities through one of her key initiatives, The Facts, Your Future. We're working on a marketing campaign to educate kids on how drug and alcohol abuse can ruin lives, especially in the dangerous era of fentanyl. So uh, I'd like to be able to bring her up to be able to uh, take, take the show over and, uh, and do, it, do what she needs to do. So. Thank you. Um, you know, when it comes to prevention, especially for our children, I think you all might remember, maybe some of you, maybe not, I remember back in the 1980s when they had Just Say No. And do you remember the ad that had the egg on the skillet? They said, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, any questions? Back in the day, that really moved me. But the video you just saw is what we need today. And that is a part of the Facts Your Future campaign because we really need to communicate to these children and these kids in school the real world ramifications of their actions. And so that's why we launched back in 2019 the Facts Your Future. It's like just say no, but it's really just say no and here's why. It's empowering the kids with the information so they can make the best decisions for their future. So that video is a small snippet of what ultimately will be provided to school districts across the state cost free for them. Uh, we're doing a lot. We're really doing a lot as you look at all of the threats that are coming into the United States. The governor talked about the porous southern border, enough fentanyl coming across in the last two years to kill every single American in the United States five times over. We have to tell our children that when they think they're taking something like a Xanax, which we don't recommend, but if they are doing that, and it's laced with fentanyl, that's it. That's the end of their life. There's no do-overs. And so we need to give them that information to empower them. We're also working with the Department of Education to come up with updated standards for things that we're seeing. And we're also working on, again, free curriculum in the form of content, materials that we're handing out, and also a lot of videos. We're also going around to various school districts across the state and holding assemblies. Because I think it's really important that we're not only empowering folks, but we're also giving them good context and perspective on the drug crisis. For instance, when these kids hear of a mother who lost their child to substance abuse, that gives them pause. When they hear from a peer their same age, like you saw the young man a second ago who lost his eyes in a motorcycle accident, the governor and I actually went to Tampa and he presented in front of a high school class. And there's probably about three or 400 students in that classroom. And when he told his story, you could have heard a pin drop. That resonated with these kids to hear somebody their own age that wishes they could take back their actions, but they can't. Also, when we go and hold these assemblies and we give this uh, curriculum to the students, we're giving perspective from a recovering addict, somebody who wishes they could go back and change time, but they can't do it and now have to live with the decisions that they've made. We also give the law enforcement side. You saw the young man a second ago. He, ha he went out, had too much to drink, got behind the wheel of a car, killed a family of four. He's now serving 44 years behind bars. They're going to hear that story firsthand. He says, I wishes I could do anything. Uh, to, to not be where I am, but more importantly, I, I killed an entire family. And when the kids hear that, that changes them going forward. That makes them think twice before they walk behind, uh, get out into their car and walk and get behind the wheel. And the other side is also the medical side of it. I think it's really important that kids see this. For instance, we're going to be providing to them the ramifications of taking something like meth. When they see this is your face before meth, this is what your face looks like after meth. 
Any questions? You decide. Also, understanding the high levels of THC that's in marijuana, when you're ingesting that on a developing brain, what that ultimately does to these kids and showing brain scans and showing things like schizophrenia. Also, the fentanyl we've talked about. You think it's something so simple as a Xanax and it's laced with fentanyl, as I mentioned before, that's something that could kill you. So the context and perspective with which we are giving this to our students, I think, is really important. But what I'm very excited about is because of the governor's leadership to put this on the forefront, to really put the pedal to the metal, to save lives. With that $200 million that we are getting from the opioid settlement, we are looking at doing nearly $40 million in prevention measures. And that is going directly to our parents. So I want to thank you as a mother. <laughs> of a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old, where a day doesn't go by where we think about what's it, what is it going to be like when we send them out to go to school and to engage in society and to make friends and to grow up. We want to equip them with the facts so that they can make sure that they have a productive, happy, and fruitful future. With that, I want to invite up now, uh, mentioned a second ago, Dr. Shefke, who is um, uh, has done, I don't even know where to start with everything he's done in this initiative, but he serves as the Deputy Secretary for Health. He's also a board certified emergency medicine physician, uh, and he has a subspecialty of EMS and has an extensive background in EMS management and has been doing yeoman's work when it comes to creating this core initiative that is just seeing unbelievable results across the state of Florida. Thank you, First Lady, and thank you, Governor. Uh, as you heard, I am board certified in emergency medicine and the subspecialty of EMS, and I've seen more than my fair share of people die from this terrible disease that we, we know as substance use disorder. This has been a real epidemic, and it, there is another epidemic, though, that our society dealt with back in the 60s that caused the birth of my subspecialty. There was an epidemic of car crashes on the highway. That caused the birth of the 911 and trauma system. So if you have a car crash on the road, we don't just take you from a 911 system to any old place. We take you to a subspecialty center that will deal with that, de deal with that disease all the way through long-term healthy care. You heard the governor say, in the last several years, overdose deaths exceed car crash deaths. We're at an inflection point in our society, like we were back in the 60s, where we said, enough is enough. We need a system of care, a coordinated system of care thanks to the governor's leadership and the first lady's leadership, we now have a coordinated system of care in Florida, the core network. And every time we mimic that trauma system, where we have a coordinated system of care, we see a drop in the death rate and a drop in the morbidity rate. In 2021, we lost over 8,000 Floridians to overdose, the vast majority due to opioids. Since 2015, the death rate from fentanyl has gone up nearly 800%. We see on advanced neuroimaging the changes in the brain that, ca that cause a chronic lifelong disease. And we need to manage this, this life-threatening chronic disease, like all other chronic life-threatening diseases. So now, with the coordinated opioid network, when 911 is called, they will, the EMS will arrive with specialized training and protocols, take you not just to any ER, but to an ER where there's staff that specializes in, in this disease with multiple specialties, peer support, and then they will manage whatever comorbidities you have, maybe mental health problems, maybe hepatitis C, which we can cure now, maybe HIV. And then when you're done being stabilized, they don't just tell you, hey, follow up somewhere. They will navigate you through a system of care, whatever it is, individual, individualized plan of care to make sure that all your needs are taken care of and you're supported to a good, healthy outcome. But we don't just treat diseases, we prevent diseases as well. Fortunately, our governor, our first lady, they get it. And the Facts Your Future gives our students across our state the, the information and the tools they need to prevent get, getting this disease to begin with. So I'm so excited that Governor DeSantis and First Lady DeSantis, they get this disease, we're at the inflection point, we're developing the system, and thanks to the governor's leadership, we have $28 million to roll this out, not from the first 12 counties, but to another 17 counties as well. Thank you so much, Governor First Lady. And one of the things about the core uh, initiative that has been so um, 
just unbelievably transforming is that when people are suffering from addiction and they're going into this process and they're getting the navigation model, they're also speaking with peers who have been in their shoes and have that perspective and then gives them hope. And so that's been a big game changer too. Uh, with that, I also want to invite up Jenna Schinholster. Um, she has, you saw her in the video a second ago, she has a pretty incredible story of resilience and overcoming adversity. Good morning. I, first, I just want to thank you guys so much for having me. I am very humbled and honored to be here. Um, I'll just share a little bit of my story. I, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. I, grew, I did not grow up in a family that was full of addiction or abuse or any of that. Um, I did suffer, I am a sexual abuse survivor as well as a suicide survivor. That's what was referenced in three cardiac arrests when I tried, I tried to take my own life. Um, I had a lot of traumas early on and they manifested in fear and I wanted to seek out anything I could to just push that down as far as I could. Um, you know, I had a disease that wanted me dead, but it will settle for miserable, and it definitely made me miserable. Um, so I was finally alone. I had lost everything. The people around me were done with me, and um, it was time to do something because I was alone and I had no one else left to blame, and I really want you to catch that. God got me alone with me. and. Um, I always say he gave me that moment of clarity, and I say that clarity is the moment where God paralyzes the liar in you long enough to see the truth. And I'm very, very <laughs> <thinking>. <laughs> um, So I got in the program, and I did the work that was laid in front of me. And one day at a time, my life started to change. I met my wonderful husband, Jason Schinholster, and um, we still pinch ourselves <laughs> for the life that we have today. And he is now a care pastor over at Impulse Church. I get to work with our youth, which I am so honored to do. And I really believe that that's the thing that's gonna help save some of these youth um, is getting this conversation started because this conversation is so important. And I think when the conversation is being had, it takes the fear out of them asking for help because they have the identification. And um, I'm just, I'm so honored to be here today. I'm so honored that God has given us the life that he has given us. Um, his mercies are new every morning. And um, there's hope for all of us. And I just, I thank you so much for letting me be here. And I'm just, I'm grateful for the work that Casey is doing. This is such an important thing. Uh, we also work in the, my husband works in the prison systems and even in those situations, you know, just getting that conversation started so they have hope and they can come out of high school or prison and have hope and have a new future and a new life. Um, so thank you very much. cry. Uh, but what, what a blessing. You are such a blessing now because you're going to be saving so many lives just by lending your voice. And it takes a lot of courage and strength to do what you do, but we're forever grateful that you're, you're in the fight with us and you're doing everything you can to save, uh, especially our youth, and help to give them a good future. Uh, also want to invite up Paula Frederick. You saw her also in the video. Um, she has a story that, of course, no parent ever wants to hear. And that is that you love, you lost your child to fentanyl. And she uh, has a lot of courage and strength as well to come up here to share her perspective um, and to talk about what it's like to lose a child, but also trying to help other parents learn the warning signs and symptoms so that they never have to go down a road that she went down. Thank you so much. Um, I will have to say, as I drove up today, I thought it was just a small little news conference. 
So um, I'm just going to leave that right there. I have so much, um, so much hope. Um, Jenna, I'm so glad you're here. I stand here today, and I will stand here until I die, making sure and helping so that not another mother goes through this. I thank the governor and the first lady just tremendously for the role they're taking in this horrible, horrible thing that we're dealing with right now in our country, in our state, with our children. And most importantly, we have got to educate our children to the dangers of these drugs. I lost my daughter Amy um, in March of 2021 to what was um, an overdose of fentanyl. It was something given to her by someone. She took it. She had no idea that she wouldn't wake up the next morning. She happened to be staying with me. Amy was a medical esthetician. She was super excited because she had five clients the next morning because COVID had kind of knocked her out, her workout a little bit. And she told me as she was sitting on the couch eating queso dip and chips, which she did love her food, that she said, Mom, she said, God has answered my prayers. She said, I have five clients tomorrow. And she was so excited. She was quite the kid. I mean, quite the kid. She was helpful. She was honest. She was a good person. This drug crisis does not discriminate. It does not discriminate. We have got to stop it. And we have got to stop it from killing our children. I, if you take anything away from this today, know that those of you who have children, whether they're in maybe middle or high school, you have got to have that discussion. They truly can't take a Tylenol from their girlfriend. They can't. They can't take anything at this point. Um, but as parents, you and, and as grandparents, anybody, church, the church is a great place. Without my faith, I would not be standing here right now. I came from a mother who had more faith and trust in God, and that's how I grew up. I was so fortunate. Um, Amy was so loved. I do have to say some things about her. She was quite the kid, quite bougie, and um, she is so terribly missed by myself, my family, her older sister, and a whole community. Um, she, like I said, she was an esthetician and uh, very good at her trade. Beautiful, beautiful child. And um, we miss her so very much. And like I said, um, I am, I am so impressed um, with this governor and our first lady and, and the steps that they're taking to not just talk about it, but do it and put that into action. I mean, we've got to save our children. We've got to save our children and we've got to get them educated. And we've all got to become educated in the process. I didn't think two years ago that I would be standing here today. I, it, and quite frankly, it is an, a mother's absolute worst nightmare. And I don't want another mother to have to endure what I have had to endure and my family has had to endure over this. Um, so I just would, I would like to ask you guys um, if, if, you know, if you've got kids or, um, you know, be proactive in, in just being upfront and honest. It's a terrible thing to have to talk about, but we got to talk about it so we can save them. The rates of death to fentanyl overdose is breathtaking for me. Um, um, 
I, I will have to say that um, first responders and our law enforcement, I really appreciate you. I know firsthand that I know for, for a fact um, in Bay County that the, those guys responded right away. They were with me. I still talk to them. They, and, and, and they are uh, they're the heart of our community. And I, th I thank you all so very much. I also want to quickly thank the First Lady and the Governor again and thank them also real quickly. Um, the Department of Health, uh, I'm not sure where we see is. Um, she is an amazing person who's done amazing with, with the videos I, um, that we, we've done. Um, and it's going to reach so many people. And I'm so honored to be a part of it. And like I said, I, I would ask that you guys all you know, say a big prayer for this whole, this whole thing that we're doing, that, that hopefully these kids can be reached. And I hope just, just even if one could be reached with my story, it'll be all worth it. And thank you. of one thing that you should know about the governor and myself and of course the great teams that, that support his, his efforts is that we are on a mission to save lives especially with our children and we're not going to rest until we make sure that we're doing everything in our power to try to prevent something that like happened to you and your family from happening to somebody else. One of the great team members I uh, want to introduce now is our great secretary of the Department of Children and Family, Siobhan Harris, uh, who is also a mom. Uh, we've had many a conversations about what can we be doing, what can we be doing better, how do we allocate the resources, and she has been uh, spearheading a lot of this effort. Thank you, First Lady and Governor, and good morning to everyone. It's a tremendous honor to stand alongside the governor and the first lady who have valiantly led the state of Florida in the fight against the opioid epidemic. The governor and the first lady have been relentless advocates on this topic. They not only recognize the magnitude of the opioid epidemic, they also have deployed an aggressive multi-prong approach to, it, to address it. By lending their voice to this critical issue, they have elevated awareness and helped to eliminate the stigma that historically has kept individuals from seeking care. At DCF, we take our responsibility very ser serious when it comes to providing high quality addiction and substance abuse treatment. And as a result of this settlement, we'll be able to increase life-saving prevention, treatment, and recovery services. We'll be able to surge funding for prevention campaigns like the Facts Your Future. The video just displayed was sobering, as it should be. And its impact will reach many, many youth and adults alike. And as a mom of two, as the First Lady just said, a mom of two teenagers, I'm immensely grateful for your aggressive push when it comes to prevention. Through the Office of Opioid Recovery, Florida will be able to continue to lead the nation in deploying new evidence-based data-driven strategies to address the epidemic. We'll remain among the best when it comes to prevention programming, and we will leverage the state's top-notch universities to conduct cutting-edge research, the results of which will allow us to stay ahead of the curve. We're also excited about the expansion of the Coordinated Opioid Recovery Network into additional counties. Addiction is an isolating disease when someone is in the depths of it, and the steps to achieve recovery can almost seem insurmountable. That's where CORE comes in. This first-of-its-kind initiative aims to break the cycle of addiction that has taken so, so, so many lives and connects individuals with the right care at the right time to ensure long-term sustainable recovery. 
In short, we will save lives because of all of these efforts, and this announcement should clearly and without a doubt demonstrate the commitment that our leaders have in protecting the residents of this state and ensuring we have the resources necessary to offer a robust array of services in our behavioral health system when individuals need it most. Thank you so much. Last but not least, this gentleman needs no introduction, our great CFO, Jimmy Patronis, local legend around here, but also has been on the front lines very passionately supporting uh, mental health and substance abuse, and we appreciate everything that he's doing to raise awareness and also to advocate for funding. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I was just whispering to the governor and first lady the irony of where we are today. Last time I was in this building, it wasn't a church. <laughs> really? You know? It's, uh, and, and just how it's all come full circle and uh, how just appropriate we're here today. Yes. You know? Um, it touches everybody. It touches everybody. Um, I appreciate uh, the governor and first lady. There'll probably be about six different places the rest of this week, or the rest of today, for different advocacy. And, and one thing that I've seen, so this is the third governor I've got to work with. And what, what I've really appreciated, what I've seen here, is I've gotten to be kind of up close, I've gotten good seats watching this show. And uh, this guy doesn't like fixing problems, he'd rather prevent problems. You know, it's no different what we've seen as he has fought against the challenges of what we've seen in Washington, D.C. with the border crisis. You're hearing the numbers of what's happened with fentanyl. You know, and, and so, you know, we, we've got lives that we're losing because of this drug. And I think, look, I'm, me personally, I, I think if you're a fentanyl dealer, um, I, I feel like you ought to be, if you're arrested, you're, you're charged with attempted murder. Because um, as well, we've seen, <laughs> but, but this couple, um, they, husband, father, governor, First lady, mom, wife, they've taken this so personal and they've made it such a difference in the citizens of this state. We're very lucky, we're very lucky, but I, uh, I appreciate how much they lean in, not to fix problems, but to prevent problems. To prevent problems. It's uh, so much easier in life where we can prevent things from happening. And again, that's why I get so excited about when he wants to pick a fight with the border issue because of all the problems we've got that are tied back to it. I get to be the state fire marshal. I get to spend a lot of time with our first responders, and I see the countless sacrifices these men and women make. And um, we just had Alachua County last night. We had a uh, deputy who took his life to suicide. Um, our first responders work 24-7, 365, around the clock, through Christmas, through anniversaries, through Valentine's Days, you name it, dealing with so many challenges that, you know, for me personally, I say we take for granted. And again, what does the governor do? He's constantly leaning forward with bonuses, dollars, recruitment. And, and I, you know, I, I guarantee if you talk to these deputies by here in the back that they got the bonus check from, from this administration. It was, uh, the, the money probably wasn't as big of a deal as the appreciation was to the morale of what you do and you put on that uniform. But, um, you know, we, I, I appreciate what, what we're seeing through the, the HEROES program. Um, and, you know, it's, and, it's, and it's a shame that part of the solution we've got right now, because we've got an uncooperative administration in Washington that we have to deploy out, you know, hundreds of thousands of doses of Narcan. Because we got to do whatever we can to save the lives when we get a chance to save them. And, um, but, you know, little by little, we're going we're gonna to work with the circumstances we, we, we've got to deal with. And little by little, we're going to save the lives. And hopefully, little by little, common sense prevails. And I love what the governor says. Common sense is no longer common. And, uh, you know, as, as we see more and more of, uh, of leadership that rises to the top, we'll make a difference in our communities. And, and as we have about 900 people a day move into this amazing state, um, they're, they're moving here for a number of reasons. But let me, I, the one thing I love to tell people is um, 
I never thought I was going to be CFO. I never thought I have to care about numbers as much as I do, but I do, and I do. It's a big deal, and 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 you look at it, it's a really big deal. Uh, but but when you look at the the families and the businesses that are relocating to this state, okay, uh, the new jobs are being created in the state. We're outpacing everybody in the nation, but they won't move here unless it's safe. They won't invest here unless it's safe, and it all comes from the top. So. Um, Governor, First Lady, thank you for what you do. I told I told people that I, I, I did a I did a Fox News hit. It's exciting, you know, Fox News calls, and I thought, man, I'm, I'm all prepared for all these things they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about me. They want to talk about you. <laughs> you know, and, and and the comment that I used, and I truly believe it. I mean, right now, Florida, we've got lightning in a bottle. You know, and and, it, and it's amazing, and it's attractive, and people want to be near this this unbelievable you know leadership we've got because you know we we are fighting against the status quo. We're questioning absurdity when we see it, and we're making a difference to protect our families to create strong communities. Simple as that. God bless y'all. Thank you for letting me be here. done, Jimmy, and we appreciate everything, and you know what, I just have to say, I am so darn proud to be a Floridian, because, right? it's not just looking at the issues, it's what can you do to do something about the issues and keep pushing the ball down the field, and so I'm very proud of our governor, but I'll have to use a phrase that he always used time and time again, that we have only begun to fight. God bless you guys. Thank you.